Want to get the best professionals reach the camera for virtual tours? Then this video is for you. In the previous video, we looked at the best consumer 360 cameras for virtual tours. In this video, we're going to look at professional 360 cameras for virtual tours, including some affordable but high quality options. Now let's talk about pro grade cameras, starting with the Day2 Max. Um, and since the MeSphere was the number one for consumers, I compared the Day2 Max to the MeSphere. And here's what I found. For detail, I found that the MeSphere actually has better detail than the Day2 Max. Not much more, but slightly better detail. Now let's look at the dynamic range. The MeSphere has some highlight detail while the Day2 Max's highlights are blown. As for the shadows, the Day2 Max's blacks are crushed, whereas the MeSphere has much better shadow detail. Now here's the kicker. On the left side, I'm using a standard non-HDR MeSphere photo. And on the right side, the Day2 Max has the maximum HDR setting. Now granted, it was a different day and time, but it still seems to be a very big difference in dynamic range. For quality, I rated the Day2 Max at 8.5. Please note, this is an early version of the Day2 Max and it's possible that the quality may increase in the future. Now, in terms of uh, workflow, the Day2 Max is excellent because it has in-camera uh, stitching for, uh, with optical flow. Um, it also has the option to do batch exporting. For these reasons, I rated the workflow at 8.5. Next, let's look at the Insta60 Pro, the, the original one. So I compared it again to the MeSphere. In terms of detail, I found that they had similar levels of detail. In terms of dynamic range, I found that the Insta60 Pro had slightly less uh, dynamic range than the MeSphere. Uh, they have the same shadow range, but a little less highlight uh, range than the MeSphere. The Insta60 Pro has plenty of features for photo. It has um, HDR and it can stitch them as well as fuse them in the desktop app. It also has RAW plus uh, JPEG mode um, and it can stitch in DNG RAW. Um, it has full manual exposure of course. In terms of quality, I rated the Insta60 Pro as 8.8. .8. So for workflow, I rated the Insta60 Pro at 8.7. Next, let's look at the Insta60 Pro 2. So the Pro 2 has similar detail as the Pro 1, but a little bit better dynamic range. Um, in terms of features, the same features as the Insta60 Pro 1. The one big difference is that with the HDR on the Insta60 Pro 2, you can take up to nine shots um, at, with an exposure interval of 0.9 EV. Amazing dynamic range, really. Because the N60 Pro 2 has better dynamic range than the Pro 1 and it has a better HDR mode, I scored the quality at 9.0. There's a workflow. The N60 Pro 2 uh, has the same uh, workflow as the N60 Pro 1. Um, so I get the score is the same, 8.7. Now I gotta note that the Pro 2 has 7 um, memory cards. Uh, so the video workflow is a little more complex than the Insta60 Pro 1. But for photo, it uses only one memory card. So it's just as easy to use as the Insta60 Pro 1 for photos. Next, let's talk about the Ultracker Aleta S2C. This is a brand new camera. Uh, it's got five lenses, four radially configured, and then one facing the Zenith. It has 66 megapixels resolution. Uh, for video, it's not really usable. It shoots 4K at around 10 FPS. The Aleta has a couple of uh, cool features, such as these rubber bumpers around the lenses. So you can, it's one of the few where you can lay it down on the table and it's not going to get damaged. Um, it also has removable batteries, and the batteries are pretty cheap. You can buy them in anywhere. It's the 18650 type. Exposure uh, can be as slow as 4 seconds. So not super slow, um, and it can be as fast as 1 over 32,000. So how detailed is the Aleta S2C? Well, I compared it against the Insta60 Pro and uh, Pro 2, and I found that it was indeed a little more detailed. In terms of stitching quality, it's uh, not perfect. It's got a little bit of warping. They may have noticed that in these shots, the camera was like a good distance from the nearest object. It might be wondering how these cameras deal with objects that are closer. And so I took tests for that as well. We'll talk about that later. 
and for color it's it's a little bit bluish. Uh, the, the white balance isn't very accurate. It is vulnerable to flare. As for dynamic range, um, in standard mode, the dynamic range is not very good. Uh, but it does have this, uh, they call it WDR mode, which um, does improve the uh, dynamic range uh, significantly. And in addition, it also has a true HDR mode with a three shot exposure. Uh, it shoots it at around 0 EV, then minus 2, and then minus 5. Um, so a little bit unusual. If you use Photomatics, it's fantastic. It, it looks amazing. So for quality, I rated it at 9.0. And um, the footnote there is this assumes that you're using the bracketed exposure um, and using um, a good third-party HDR software like Photomatics. Um, in terms of workflow, um, it's excellent because it stitches the photos um, in camera with optical flow stitching for both the standard as well as the WDR mode. Um, and so I rated it at 9.0. Next, let's take a look at the Panono. It has 36 lenses and has a resolution of 16384 by 8192. That's the highest among one-shot 360 cameras. Uh, what makes the Panono excellent is the image quality. Uh, it has amazing detail, uh, definitely way more detailed than the Aleta S2C. It also has excellent dynamic range, uh, in both in standard mode and even more so when you use the, uh, the built-in HDR mode. So for photo quality, I rated the Panono 9.5. That's the highest among uh, one-shot 360 cameras for photo. Um, in terms of um, uh, workflow, well, what you do is you have to upload everything to the cloud and it, everything happens automatically. Um, so on one hand, it's automatic. On the other hand, you have a little bit less control since it's cloud-based stitching. So I took away some points for that. So um, it would ordinarily be a 9.0, but because it's cloud-based, I dropped it down to 8.5. What if you wanted the same quality as the Panono, but you don't have the budget for it? Well, there's an alternative. You can use a GoPro Hero panoramic head. Um, so there's several right now. There's the Pano Hero H5B, there's the Pano 5 Plus 1, Mark II, and there's the iGo 720VR. Um, all three of them are made for Hero 5, 6, and 7. Uh, to test them, I used uh, Pano Hero H5B with the uh, Hero 7 Black and then I compared them to the Panono and here's what I found. Uh, even though it has lower nominal resolution, the actual detail was higher than the Panono. And in terms of dynamic range, um, it's pretty good, especially when you use HDR mode for the Hero 7 Black. Um, and in that case, it becomes kind of similar to the Panono. The Hero 7 Black also has limited exposure controls. Uh, so uh, for all these reasons, uh, the quality, I, I would normally rate it at 10, just in terms of the sheer quality, but because of the uh, high possibility of inconsistent exposures and the limited exposure controls, I took off a few points from that, so I dropped it down to 9.7. Um, and in terms of workflow, both the Panel Hero and the Panel H5B um, take 8 shots. Um, and you have to make sure that, again, that your exposures are as consistent as possible and your white balance as well. I would say it's a world of a difference from the average uh, consumer 360 camera, so I rated the uh, workflow at 7.0. You might be wondering what, what's the difference between the Panel Hero, Panel 5 Plus 1, and the iGo 720 VR. Uh, well, in terms of image quality, they're similar, except that the Panel Hero and Panel 5 Plus 1 had the same stitching quality. For the iGo 720 VR, it had more stitching errors than the uh, Pano Hero in Pano 5 Plus 1, so uh, I can't really honestly recommend the iGo 720 VR. So I would instead recommend the Pano Hero and or Pano 5 Plus 1. And so far we've been talking about consumer 360 cameras. What about DSLRs? Well, the quality and the workflow can vary considerably. Uh, depends on the kinds of lens you use and the kind of panel head that you use. Like if you use a circular fisheye and you pair it with an uh, APS-C lens from a camera such as the Sony A6000 and let's assume it's a decent quality circular fisheye like the Mikey 6.5 then the image quality would be around 
9.3 so has the same level of detail as the Aleta S2C but better dynamic range and bit depth. Now in terms of the workflow well it's gonna be harder even than the panel 5 plus 1 because there's a higher chance of um, errors so it could be as uh, high as let's say around 6.8 if you use a ring mount panel head to minimize errors but depending on the number of shots you could take it could go drop down all the way to like five or less so a while ago i mentioned that i took some tests where there are newer objects so i tested them basically in a in a hotel bathroom and here's what i found um basically for these professional um cameras the I, I found that they all had uh, serious stitching errors in this small bathroom. Um, so the, they did differ in terms of the size of the serious stitching error. The one that had the most significant stitching errors was the Dato Max. It had serious errors like basically in all the corners. Next was the NCC Pro and Pro 2. Um, they had uh, big errors uh, near the nader. For the Panono, it was okay almost everywhere except in one direction it had serious stitching errors like in the mirror you can see that finally the aleta uh, it almost got it okay except that in one corner um, it did have uh, serious stitching errors but it had the smallest area with stitching errors compared to the other 3c cameras as we saw small spaces are a problem for professional 3D cameras because of their size. Uh, so there are a few options. Number one, you could try to fix the image in post, but that's gonna take a while. Uh, second, uh, you can use a smaller 3D camera, but that's gonna result in a different image quality from the rest of your virtual tour. And the third option is to use a DSLR to shoot your uh, 3D photo. And I have some tutorials to show you how to do that. Uh, wouldn't it be nice to have the image quality of a DSLR panel with the ease of a 360 camera? Well, that's what the fourth option is about. It just came out this month. It's a motorized panel head from Nodal Ninja called the Mecha E1 Rotator Head. Um, I pre-ordered one, so it's going to be coming in a few weeks. Stay tuned for a review. Meanwhile, how would you like a way to distinguish your virtual tour from the competition? Well, one way to do that is by adding video. So in my next tutorial, I'm going to show you some techniques for shooting 3D videos and non-3D videos with your 3D camera. Thanks and I'll see you in 360.